So, it's review number 50, huh? Well, I've been looking through a list of all the stuff I could do. Everything I could play for a milestone like this. All the big ones. And I could only think of one thing. Something that would feel wrong if I just left it unfinished. It's time to go beyond Dark Castle. You might remember that it's been almost six years since I reviewed the original Dark Castle, and I've sprinkled jokes through other videos about how I'd basically abandoned it. For about half that time, actually. It's about bloody time you got to it rather than record fanfiction plot segments for your Star Trek reviews. You were responsible for one of those! I have no stake in this. It took less time for this game to come into being than my review for it, coming out a mere two years after the original in 1988. Silicon Beach Software is still the publisher, and the original crew is still here, so nothing major really changed between the two games, at least as far as the people behind it. Jonathan Gay is still programming, Mark Steven Pierce still provides the graphics and design, and Dick Noel still provides the voices that bring the whole thing to life, thanks to the advanced audio capabilities of the Mac at the time, and every one of them have improved. What did change is the gameplay. Somewhat. You still venture forth as the now named Prince Duncan, collect the shield and fireball spells, and go to face the Black Knight. Except you need five magical orbs now, because collecting magical artifacts to complete a quest is something you never do in a game, but I digress. Yes, the game's still a bit clunky, and yes, it can be hard to tell what entrances are where. This game does give you something the first one didn't, though. A map and a practice mode. I had to. The game is also a bit more forgiving about grabbing ropes and such, so there's less problems in that regard. There's also weapons you can grab to fight and block with in certain parts, which, while I appreciate the effort, is just kind of repetitive. You block and hit the same pattern until the other guy gets stunned and you can just wail on him. At least that means it's not random, and admittedly being able to smack barrels was kind of fun to find out. The truly different levels are the swamp and the forest, where the petrol-powered helicopter pack comes into play. You heard that right. Yes, somehow in this era of castles and evil knights, we have a helicopter pack that runs on gasoline. I'm actually not sure which part of that is more ridiculous. I'm just going to assume this is another venture from Merlin Technology. Speaking of Merlin, he's even worse here than he is in the original. In the first one, if you jump towards him, he zaps you, which I guess I can understand. Don't take a flying leap at the squishy wizard. In this one, if you fail to collect the orb first, he just fries you for no good reason. Like, from a gameplay perspective, I can sort of see why? But honestly, what's stopping me from going back after he gives me the fireball spell and teleports me away? The trips to the labyrinth are actually a pretty decent way to stock up on supplies, rather than the first one where you kind of just leap into the nearest dungeon. The small enemies don't even insta-kill you in this one because now you have a life bar which you can heal with food. It also acts as a sort of time limit for rooms too, but you usually won't be worrying about it. Unless you're out of elixirs and dealing with snakes. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? By the way, those useful supplies include bombs, which... Yeah, that's actually a thing I could see in the time period, cartoonish look of the bombs aside. Before I get someone trying to correct me, the Chinese were using bombs as early as the 9th century. The bombs aren't generally used offensively, though. They're mostly to blast through the catacombs for one of the orbs. They're too slow for much of anything else. With all this gas lying around, I'm surprised I can't just make molotovs out of the empty elixir bottles or something. Maybe that's what the fireballs actually are. Thanks, Merlin. Now I just have this hilarious mental imagery of Prince Duncan heroically chucking Molotov cocktails directly at the Black Knight's face. The dungeon is not quite the restocking joyride it was in the first game. The Black Knight's redecorated the place just for you, and that's the game's description, not mine. How do you get out? By using the world's most fragile keys to unlock the doors. One random door leads you out, and if you use the wrong door, the door just eats the key. Nom. Yes, this door is different every time you come down here. There's not much in the way of supplies here, so it really is more of a punishment to end up falling down here. You can try and do some really precise jumping, or do the same thing and just go hit the switch over here to turn off the stereotypical swinging torture axe thing. Just don't trip over anything. 
Classic Duncan. Speaking of getting out of the dungeon, everything has a bit more clarity in the visual department now. There's a good attention to detail to everything, and platforms are generally easy to see. Platforms that are extended are bright and have a shadow underneath them, and there's no beginning of level platforms that just drop you into a pit if you stand still. On top of that, the backgrounds seem to be designed to provide maximum visibility to things like swinging ropes and platforms. If there's one nitpick I have, the labyrinths can get rather plain at times. But I like to think the Black Knight expressly designed them that way on purpose, just to confuse you while trying to navigate them. So the game is a lot bigger, it really does go beyond Dark Castle, both in a literal sense and in a gameplay sense. But won't such a long game be frustrating to beat all in one go? Well, that's why we now have the save system, which is located in the computer room. Okay, that settles it. Merlin Technologies is definitely a thing, and the Black Knight's been subcontracting him. Maybe my skit of him getting a starship isn't that ridiculous at this rate. The save system does lead to my nitpick that scores are saved even when you load a save game, so you can end up spamming the high scores like I did getting past the Black Knight. But oh well. Maybe it could have been handled like Glider Pro. If you load a saved game, no high score, but you can still go and complete the game just fine. But then you could just farm the game for points and... Never mind, I don't think I can win this one. What I'm saying here is the score is basically... Pointless. Yeah! Kind of a minor thing, but aside from the general Dark Castle clunkiness, there's not any huge negatives to this game. If you didn't like the original Dark Castle, you still might not like this one, but if you did, this one will be great. Like seemingly all good Macintosh sequels, looking at you crystal crazy, this one wasn't ported anywhere, while the original was ported all over the place. Though given how those ports were, it's probably for the best. This game was made for Macintosh, rather like the Fool's Errand, it just feels wrong on anything else at the time. Oh great, you can just save scum your way to victory, you cheater. Eh, that's not really true. The save point is an essential part of the castle, so you still have to be good enough to get through each section, and if you want to be well stocked for the final battle, get through each section smoothly. So the save system is relatively well balanced, and the sections to get each orb feel about as long, if not longer, than in the original game, and there's five sections rather than the original two, plus the final battle. It's still not a long game, but everything definitely feels more expansive. Though, the final battle is a little more anticlimactic. In the original, you run around pulling the four levers to topple the Black Knight's throne, and you can see it wobble each time. In this one, you have to run through seven floors of obstacles, while you're assaulted by gargoyles, and the Black Knight continually throws mugs at you from off-screen before you finally get to him. Which, yes, it is a lot, and there's definitely some precision platforming in there, which never quite mixes well with this game, but once you get to the Black Knight, you basically slam him in the face with fireballs until he topples over. You could argue that at least you actually fight the Black Knight this time. Maybe he learned to hold his alcohol better. I will say that the end screen is really satisfying, with Prince Duncan gasping for breath and then cheering, much like in the original, but in high resolution. All in all, a very worthy conclusion to the Dark Castle series. But, but it's not over yet. Oh, come on. I beat it. No, no. Beat it on advance this time. I don't know if I'm up for that. You have to. Don't you threaten me again. No, I'm, I'm not. Trust me on this. You have to. I... Please. I don't know if you'll get to it again. All right, then. Oh boy. There's people who can go through multiple runs of Advanced on the original game with no shield, but I'm not that kind of superhuman. Advanced is already hard enough for me. It's not like you can just skip the shield room in this game anyways, because there's an orb there, so you have to do that level. And like in the original, you need the fireball because gargoyles, and you have to get all five orbs to unlock the final battle, so there's really no corners you can cut here. You just have to get good. Ugh. Sorry, I cringed a little bit, saying get good unironically. Ugh. <laughs> Anyways, there's several bigger changes to Advanced. Like the original, the Black Knight's mugs bounce and enemy placements are different. Here, hazards are also quicker, and the labyrinths actually have crawl spaces in them, making things even more interesting to navigate. But with enough practice and patience, you can work your way up to the Black Knight, slam his face in for a third time if you played on Intermediate as well, and... Whoa. That... that was weird. Did anyone else see that? Wait, destroyed? I destroyed the Black Knight. This got kinda dark. This game... Just let me completely annihilate the villain. Yes! Woo! Mm-hmm. <laughs>
<laughs> That's right, the game actually has a true ending. A true ending that nullifies your whole effort to defeat the Black Knight. Like evil itself, when you strike it down, it will be replaced. Jeez, that's some heavy stuff. Also, it's a sequel hook! For a sequel that wouldn't come out for 20 years, but that is hopefully a story for another day. Thanks to everyone for sticking around this long. Didn't think I'd get hundreds of people watching me talk about my old childhood games, but yet, here we are. <laughs> it's been fun, and I really hope I'm back for a triumphant return soon enough. This is Tanara Kurinov, signing off. Until next time.